प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोद कारी पल बन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जो गल चरण सोल चिन्न जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह कनिष्याम आराध निजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे सुप्रीम ओम माइटी our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. This is Yuga Course 5 in English. For the past four courses, there have been various topics that we have been covering Kirtans, Swami Nivato, and Charitra in a similar fashion. Today we'll take a small kirtan by Sadhguru Premanan Swami, followed by Sadhguru Gunatitan Swami Nivato, and then a charitra. The kirtan is Tamari Murti Vina Mara Nathare Biju Mane Apasho Ma. This kirtan, just in short, comprises of how Sadhguru Premanan Swami is only asking for the murti of Bhagwan or the idol of Bhagwan. Now in this world, if we see and perceive, people ask for many, many things. May it be a game council, may it be nice clothing, may it be an iPod or an iPad, or may it be a new phone to play on, may it be cars or homes clothing, everything that comprises of the world, which we consider in our Swami Narayan text as maya or illusion, this soul, these jeeves, the souls that live in the world that have no knowledge of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, they wish and ask for such kind of materialistic pleasures. On the other hand, Sadhguru Premanand Swami is teaching the devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan what to ask for. And the essence of this kirtan is Tamari Murti Vina Mara Nathare Pijumane Apshoma. Do not give me anything besides your Murti. Now you're probably thinking that why would you ask for Bhagwan's Murti or idol? What is in Bhagwan's Murti that is not here on this world? What is so alluring about Bhagwan's Murti that is not in this world? See, if you want to develop some kind of glory for something, or if you want to develop some kind of uh, mahima, we can say, then you have to compare both high and low properties. For example, outside pizza compared to homemade pizza. Most people really, really, really enjoy outside foods. So when their mother or whoever makes them th that very same item, let's just stick with pizza, at home they do not like it. They say it doesn't taste as good as outside. But why was that Mahima or importance developed for the outside pizza over the homemade pizza because that person has tasted the outside pizza and had, can say that the flavors are very nice, it, the cheese is very nice, they make it in a unique way, the crust is very nice. Compared to the home pizza, it's very brittle, the sauce is not good, the cheese is not good. But when is this possible? When you looked at a high and you compare it with the low, then automatically more greatness would be de developed for this higher item than this item that which is very low. In the same way, going back to our question, what is in the idol of God which is not here on this world? Well, I explained to you before that there is many, many things in the world. Everything and anything is in the world. 
cars, homes, clothing, etc., so on and so forth. Yet, Bhagwan only has one form, obviously, which has two arms, two legs, two eyes, according to Gadada Middle Chapter 13th Vachnamrut. Yet, the bliss which is in Bhagwan's idol, even in one pore, is not compared to even countless earths combined. But one cannot realize that right away. Slowly but surely, after associating with an Ekantik Satpurush, for us in the form of our Puja Guruji, we'd be able to understand that there is more happiness in the idol of Bhagwan than here on this here in this world. That's why Sadguru Premanand Swami is setting a target for us. Sadguru Premanand Swami is showing us the direction of what to ask for and how to ask with. To ho to he said, Sadguru Premanand Swami says to fold both of one's hands and humbly ask for Bhagwan's idol. Ask for the sung or the company of an Ekantik Satpurush, which is needed, which is an essential element for living and progressing in satsang. Just like how in the world, there are very certain essentials that are needed, such as food, water, shelter, and clothing to survive. In the similar fashion, sang or company of an Ekantik Satpurush is needed to not only survive but to progress and realize who Bhagwan Swaminarayan is. Swami says here that please come and reside inside of my heart and keep me with you always and always. That is my only vinanti, that is my only request. I have no other request and please remove all my other desires of everything else. Now Sadguru Premanand Swami had no other desires but of Bhagwan. But to teach us again, Swami has written this kirtan for us and we should be daily reminded of our goal, our ultimate goal, our task, which is the idol of Bhagwan. Moving on to Sadguru Shri Gunati Tanan Swami Nivato. Swami Narayan Hare, Swami Narayan Hare, Swami Avat Karije. If one had not attained God, but not, but not such a sadhu, if one had attained God, but not such a sadhu, who would have put in such efforts and explained the glory and greatness of God? Therefore, the devotees of this sadhu are more fortunate than the devotees of Maharaj. Now, Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami is speaking this vat. In that time, Swami might have even got scolded for saying this vat. Swami might have got even insulted by saying that how could you put sadhu over Bhagwan? How could you say that the devotees of sadhus are greater than the devotees of Bhagwan? But in reality, Swami's direction is to join each and every soul to Bhagwan Swami Narayan. But Swami knows that it's not possible without the company of an Ekantik Satpurush. For example, in our home we have many, many outlets. Suppose we have a device. It's an iPod. It's very, very dear to us and we have to charge it, right? Without charging the iPod, it's not possible for us to play or do anything we want on it. But there's two forms of electricity, the outlets in your home and the other form of electricity is outside of your home. There's electric poles which provide electricity to your home. You have a charger, you have a wall charger and you have a wire. Now if someone asked you and said, why don't you go outside and charge your uh, iPod on that electric pole? Would that be possible? No. What would happen? Something very, very bad, right? But if someone said, here, come come inside the home and there's an outlet right there, go ahead and pl plug your charger in and go ahead and charge your iPod. Would that, would that work? Yeah. In a similar fashion, Bhagwan Swaminarayan 
is very very high voltage which is that electric pole outside the soul is not able to comprehend or even connect to Bhagwan's form or Bhagwan's entity because it's very very high it has a high current now you're probably saying how could Bhagwan have a high current is Bhagwan harmful if we join in him no not like that we souls do not have the capacity to join in Bhagwan that's the analogy behind this but the outlet outs inside our homes it's very very simple you put your wall charger in and then the wire and then you charge your iPod and your char your iPod will be charged in half an hour that is in the form of an Ekantik Satpurush here he is on this earth he is talking to us walking with us speaking to us he is putting his hand over our head giving us blessings he is serving us different foods he is doing many many things here on this earth but it's very easy to join right because we can relate with him we can speak with him we can share our depression our sadness with him but what if we sat in front of Piyuda Gansham Maharaj and shared our sadness and depression will you have the capacity to talk with Bhagwan and Bhagwan give you a solution no it's not possible yet but the Satpurush by joining in him slowly but surely elevates our level that we can speak to Bhagwan we can relate with Bhagwan we can become friends with Bhagwan that's why we should charge our iPod inside our homes in an outlet compared to taking electricity from high voltage poles outside of our home so Swami is saying if one had attained God but not such a sadhu who would have put in such efforts and explain the glory and greatness of God who would do this Bhagwan himself well Bhagwan would come and say that I am Bhagwan believe in me no one would believe in them that's why the sadhu Bhagwan Swami Narayan brought 500 nun santo with him so that through different nun santos some santos wrote kirtans and explained the glory of God some santos wrote scriptures and explained the glory of God some santos preached and did discourses and explained the glory of God some santos built temples and propagated Bhagwan Swami Narayan Saropari some santos performed seva and through their character others understood that Bhagwan Swaminarayan Sarvopari and Bhagwan Swaminarayan is great but if Bhagwan did not bring any santos and just came here on himself yes he is great he would be able to do so but it just wouldn't work in the world that's why Bhagwan Swaminarayan brought 500 santos and through them he did various activities and acts there's a story of one time Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself was sitting in Gadara and he was sitting there and at times many many devotees from far distances would come and visit him in groups big groups such as 15 20 50 Haribhaktos even 100 Haribhaktos so one time a batch of Haribhaktos from Surat a city in Gujarat came to see Bhagwan Swaminarayan in Gadara which is a far distance there was about 50 of those bhaktos and came directly to Bhagwan where he was sitting underneath the tree and started to perform Dhanvat performed Bhagwan's Pujan and sat down in front of Bhagwan Bhagwan started to correlate with one another and say how are you doing how is your business how is your family social life is everything good is there any problems Swami uh, Maharaj did such Vivarik talks such talks which is just wordly nothing else and this uh, the the Haribhakta said hey Maharaj please tell us something meaning share something with us your knowledge your glory your greatness they came with an expectation far away near another tree there Sadhguru Muktanand Swami was sitting there alone just observing Bhagwan from a distance all those 50 Haribhaktos that were in front of Maharaj 
he said, Maharaj said, get up please. And the Hari Bhaktas became surprised that Maharaj, we, we came all the way from Surat and we came all the way here to meet you. It's been many days of travel. We want to speak with you. We want to stay with you. We want to hear talks from you. Maharaj said, please do as I say, get up. All the Bhaktas got up. And Maharaj pointed to where Muktanan Swami was. And Maharaj said, go and sit or sit with Muktanan Swami. The Hari Bhaktas said, we are here to meet you, Maharaj. Not Muktanan Swami. Muktanan Swami is a great sadhu. We have heard many, many good things about him. We are very, very fortunate to have him as a sadhu. But Maharaj, what more fortune than to meet you, the God of gods? Maharaj says, do you, do you want to do what I say? Or do you want to do what your mind says? Obviously, all the devotees were bound to Maharaj. So, they all folded their hands and said, Maharaj, we want to do what you say. Please guide us and tell us what to do. Maharaj said that, I want you to go to where Sadhguru Muktanan Swami is sitting underneath that tree and go and do his samagam. Hear talks from him. So, all the Hari Bhaktos got up and went to where Muktanan Swami was and sat down and folded their hands and said, hey, Swami, please talk to us. Please share something. Give us some insight. Muktan Swami said that you were just sitting next to Maharaj, with Maharaj. What is the reason? And Muktan Swami knew why Bhagwan had sent those bhaktos. Yet, the Hari Bhaktos said, we don't know why Maharaj has sent us. And then slowly but surely, for a couple of hours, Muktan and Swami did samagam with all those 50 bhaktos and explained the glory of and greatness of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, who he is, how he is, how great he is, how he is different from all the other avatars and incarnations, how he is the creator, sustainer and destroyer of everything. All this glory Swami spoke about for many, many hours. And those Hari Bhaktos became very fulfilled by Swami's Vato. And then they went back to where Maharaj was again and sat in front of Maharaj. And then Maharaj explained to all the Bhaktos there sitting that, do you know why I sent you to Sadguru Muktanan Swami where he was? The, the Hari Bhaktos said that, Maharaj, before when we entered this village from Surat and came here, just a couple hours ago, we just thought that you are God. How you were, how great you are, how many universes you control, how many universes you destroy by mere thought, how you are in each and every atom, all this different mahima, this greatness, we did not realize at all. But by your grace, when you showed us the way to where Muktanan Swami was, and when we listened to those talks of Sadguru Muktanan Swami for two, three hours, then only we realized that Maharaj, you are no ordinary God. You are beyond gods. You are so great that there is nothing that can compare to you. And then Maharaj explained that this is the reason that I sent you to Muktanan Swami. And if you had just sat with me, your souls would not have progressed as they would by sitting with Sadguru Muktanan Swami. Coming back to this vat, that, that prasang, that story completely matches this vat because Swami has said it. We can say that Bhagwan himself staying inside of Swami has said this vat. Again, I'm reading, if one had attained God, but had not, but not such a sadhu, who would have put in such efforts and explained the glory and greatness of God? Who would have done it? Therefore, the devotees of this sadhu are more fortunate than the devotees of Maharaj. I want to tell you one last prasang of Sadguru Muktanan Swami's life and of Amba Shet, a very, very staunch devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan of the village Gadari. 
Gadari was situated 10 kilo kilometers away from Gadara. Gadara was Maharaj's, you can say, home. When he, re when he was ruling and reigning the, uh, the Sampradaya, Maharaj lived in Gadara, in the Adhakachar's Darbar. Amashit was very, very, he was a very rich merchant and he had immense enthusiasm to serve Shriji Maharaj. You know what he would do? He would not only give Maharaj his money or property, but every single day, every single day he would walk 10 kilometers from his village to the village of Gadara and would give Maharaj a datan. You know what a datan is? Datan, you know how we have brush right now? What? A branch from a tree. But you know how we have brush right now? They didn't have brushes in those days. We're very fortunate. We even have electric brushes now. But in that time, they used branches of trees, which were called datan, which were very, very good for the teeth. And this amba shade would soak this datan in kesar water, elaichi water, so it would become, it would become, it would have those, the fragrance would be infused inside the datan. So when Bhagwan would use the datan to brush his teeth, to chew on the datan, then Bhagwan would also, you have not been to Gadara for the past six months, or six days, and Maharaj is remembering you. What's on your heart? And right there and then, again Ambashet said, Maharaj did this, how could he do this? We call him God? How can he be called God? Who is he? People worship him, this is the wrongdoing. And Muktan and Swami started to explain the glory of Bhagwan and how great he is, how powerful he is, and how he is supreme and how he is different from all the other avatars that have taken a form here on this earth how he is supreme and all this different glory for many many hours Muktan Swami explained and as Muktan Swami started to explain Ambashit's facial expression started to change again and become pure and finally after several several hours of operation Ambashit fell to the feet of Muktanan Swami and asked for forgiveness and said, please forgive me. Muktanan Swami, please forgive me. I've made a grave mistake by misunderstanding that Bhagwan is not a mere human, but Bhagwan is the God of gods and nothing can touch him. No vice, no, you can say, no, no nature, which is greed, anger, ego, lust, jealousy, hypocrisy, so on and so forth can touch Bhagwan for even a minute second. If this whole universe or even if countless universes were blended and made into small particles, not even one dust particle can touch Bhagwan. That's how nirdos, that's how beyond he is from this maya. All this glory Muktan and Swami explained and then Ambashit fell back, she fell at the feet of Muktan and Swami. And Muktan and Swami asked or said, now you know what the next step is, right? We have to go back to Gadara and apologize to Maharaj. And Ambashit felt very, very bad at heart. But who is that mother like Sadhu? that went all the way to Gadari, 10 mile, 10 kilometers away and explained the glory of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. That's why Gunatiyan Swami had to say in this Vat that the devotees of a sadhu are more fortunate than the devotees of Bhagwan. Because the sadhu went there 10 kilometers away and explained the glory of Bhagwan and again instilled faith inside of Amba Shit. But if the sadhu had not gone there, if Muktan and Swami had not gone there, then what would have happened to Amba Shet? Where would he have ended up? When would he have reached Akshardham? No one knows. But Muktan and Swami, such a mother-like figure in our satsang fellowship, went all the way to Gadari and explained the glory of Bhagwan and brought back Amba Shet to Gadara 
and had and made him apologize to Maharaj. And there, when both Muktanand Swami and Ambashit entered Gadari or Gadara, and and had the darshan of Maharaj, Ambashit cried and cried and 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 could not even could not even say a word because he felt very very bad. He felt remorse. He felt bad that he could not understand the glory of God until when he had met Muktanand Swami on that day. And then Maharaj, obviously, compassionate, Dayaru, very, very, you can say, uh, compassionate in his nature, forgave Ambashed right there and then, put a, put a new kanti on him. And then finally Ambashed's heart became at peace. But what is the reason behind this? It's all due to the sadhu. Such an ekantik satpurush. That that's why Sadguru Gunatitan said that even if one had attained God but had not attained a sadhu, then who would explain the glory and greatness of Bhagwan himself? And finally, the last story is of Valbai and her greed, which can be read on the course in the Yuasaba. These are the three topics that we covered. Akirtan, Sadguru Gunathyan Sonivat, and the story of Valbai you can re uh, read uh, on the UA course PDF. As all of you know, that the whole world is trembling due to this virus which is going on. Our Loya Damparivar Satsang currently located in New Jersey and in Florida and in Macon, the Mandirs, they're temporarily shut down for. The, the time of until April 15th but all of you have the benefit of the doubt of taking live broadcast lab so Kathavarta will be conducted here at Mandir morning and night every single day so make sure to take lab nonetheless pray for all those to Bhagwan Swami Narayan and pray for the whole world that everything becomes regular peace at heart and, and no one has to suffer anymore that is the characteristic of a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan that he or she prays for others and not one's own self. So saying this, please pray for all those who are uh, severely ill or injured and and, uh, and Bhagwan and our Puja Guruji will do well for them. Saying this, my humble Jai